This is an example of a problem in our web assignment for Lesson 11-3 that involves um, carrying out a chi-square test for independence or a chi-square test for homogeneity uh, with the use of Minitab, which really saves time and is much more efficient and far less tedious than calculating these values by hand. So I wanted to create this video to demonstrate how this is done. So this is a question again in the web assignment. It says the following table is from a publication. The individuals in the following table have an eye irritation, a nose irritation, or a throat irritation. They have only one of the three. Is there sufficient evidence to reject the, the null hypothesis that the type of ear, nose, or throat irritation is independent of the age group at a level of significance equal to 0.05? And obviously, because they use the word independent, this is a chi-square test for independence, also known as a chi-square test for association. We want to find the test statistic, determine the p-value, and then make a decision. So what I did was I went to Minitab, and I entered these values in columns 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now be careful. Some of the problems in your web assignment have totals provided in the tables as well. You never enter the totals in Minitab. So you'll see here that I have entered all of those values in this Minitab document. And now it's just a matter of running the test. So if I go to Stat, Tables, same place I went for my goodness of fit tests, the difference here is I'm going to choose chi-square test for association or independence. I do not have raw data, but rather have summarized data in a two-way table. So I'll select that, and then I'll click in the columns that I want to include, and I want to include all four of those columns. So I'm going to double-click on C1, double-click on C2, on C3, and on C4. And that's it. Now I'm ready to run the test, so I click OK. And you can see that it first provides us with a worksheet where for each of the um, 12 cells in this instance, the top number is the observed count, and the bottom number is the expected count. Now, by the way, it's determining expected count by taking the total of the row that that cell is in multiplying by the total of the column that that cell is in, and dividing by the grand total. So for instance, for this expected count of 434, it's taking the total of this row, 1,435, multiplying it by the total of this column, 1,590, and dividing by the total of all in the data set, 5,257. And it just allows, this table allows us to see how different the observed were from, from their expected counts for each of the cells. But if I scroll down further, this is the information I'm interested in. You'll use the top row of information. This is called Pearson's chi-square. So the chi-square test statistic is 12.819. The degrees of freedom is 6. And the p-value is 0.046. Our chi-square tests are always right-tailed tests, so it's the area to the right of our chi-square test statistic of 12.8-ish. And if by chance it is rounding incorrectly, you can just right-click on that number, choose decimal places, and tell it how many decimal places you want. Most often in the, in the web assignments, they're wanting the chi-square to be reported with two, but just follow those rounding directions carefully. So, in response to this question, I would enter a chi-square of 12.82 and a p-value of 0.046. So the test statistic, 12.82. The p-value, now I see they're asking us to round our answer to four decimal places. So I'll come back here and I'll right-click on p-value, select decimal places, and change this to four. So our p-value is again in the top row, 0 0.0460. Of course, we know that when p is low, we reject the ho and have significant evidence to say that the ha is true. 
Well, our alpha level is 0.05 and P is less than that, so we are going to reject the null, which is either option one or option three. And when we reject, we have significant evidence to say that the alternative is true, which is what our first option is saying.